from your breaking news and weather authority. This is 13 Wham News at 11. Officer Police Officer, Triangle Airport, Bench, Bench, I-5-7, and Watch, July 21st, 2022. Officer Mazurkowitz's proce procession made its way from Fairport to the Rochester Public Safety Building tonight. The video you see here was the procession going down 490 before making its final stop on Exchange Street. Good evening, I'm Chase Howell. Tonight, Rochester Police Officer Tony Mazurkowitz will lie and stay at the Public Safety Building ahead of his funeral tomorrow. Many of his friends and family spent today remembering Mazurkowitz. That's where we start our breaking news coverage with 13 Wham's Dalton Williams. He was in Fairport tonight outside of Mazurkowitz's calling hours and joins us live outside the Public Safety Building now to show us how the community showed their respects today. You could really feel the love from the communities of Fairport and Parrington today as the visitation hours took place earlier this afternoon and the procession took place earlier this evening for fallen RPD officer Anthony Mazurkowitz. Lieutenant Greg Bellow from the Rochester Police Department overwhelmed with the emotion from the community and other police departments coming together to rally around their brothers and sisters in blue as they're reeling from the loss of one of their own. Bellow saying the amount of support just shows what kind of an officer in person Anthony Mazurkowitz was. We want to talk about a role model of an officer. Officer Mazurkowitz, right, is that role model. He's one of my role models. When I was going through myself, going through his awards this past week, it, it was in his file. It was, it was truly incredible, uh, the work he's done. And those are life-saving awards that are mixed into those of the amount of guns that he's gotten off the street, the amount of is part of working in the tactical unit, and that's what that's what Officer Mazurkowitz did was take that high danger stuff and go out there and do for 29 years. Earlier this evening, dozens of people lined Aralt Road as the procession for Mazurkowitz drove by. People saying it's their way of giving back to a man who gave so much for his community. It touched, touched so many lives, and we, we never know who we touch and how, in what little way or big way. So it just and and look at how he's touched all these people. David Lippa, one of the community members in attendance for both the visitation and procession, says it's important to continue to remember and honor Mazurkowitz even after he's laid to rest Monday afternoon. We need to keep showing our respect to them. We don't need to know them, but as the saying goes, we don't need to know them, but we owe them. We owe them for keeping us so that our streets aren't more crime-ridden than what they already are. For those that want to send flowers or make a donation, those can be made to the Rochester Police Locust Club. Live in Rochester, I'm Dalton Williams, 13 Wham News. All right, Dalton, thank you. Tomorrow, flags on all state buildings will continue to be flown at half staff in honor of Officer Mazurkowitz. The governor sending out a statement saying, quote, all of New York grieves the loss of Officer Mazurkowitz alongside his family, the Rochester Police Department and the community, and we will never forget his sacrifice. Tomorrow, the funeral will begin at noon at the Blue Cross Arena. The police department is requesting the public not to attend. We will broadcast the service on 13WAM ABC and on 13WAM.com. We also want to remind you that streets will be closed in order to accommodate the funeral service tomorrow. Starting at 8 a.m., the following streets on your screen will be closed to traffic. And speaking of tomorrow, what's the weather looking like for of the procession? So tomorrow we'll see uh, sunny skies to start the day. Temperatures will work their way into the mid-80s by the afternoon. And then it's back to the heat and humidity as we go through the rest of the week. Now, tomorrow is the first day of August, so we've got a little bit of information here going into this, mo this next month here. Uh, typically the second wettest month uh, going back to the 1800s when records started on average, we get a little bit more than three inches of rain typically our most humid month as well the average high temperature near 80 degrees and then the sun sets there they're back at about quarter to eight by the end of the month so just what you're looking forward to uh, if you're liking the summer weather uh, it's not going to be stick around too long temperatures tonight in the upper 60s right now we're going back into the mid to lower 60s tonight 
clearing skies to the east. There's some clouds there to the west. Clear skies as well and clear overnight. Most of the day tomorrow should be sun filled. A couple clouds early and then the chance for a rain shower develops near midnight. Mostly cloudy to start Tuesday. Some rain showers then back to clear skies going into Thursday. Temperatures once again in the upper 80s by the afternoon. We have a couple chances for 90 in the forecast this week. I'll show you when that is coming up in just a few minutes. All right, John, thank you. A 14 year old male is in critical condition after police say they found him unresponsive on North Burley Road in Rochester. Police say he was hanging out of a vehicle and fell out when the vehicle was making a turn. He was taken to the hospital for life threatening injuries to his upper body. Four others in the vehicle were working with police on scene. A shooting sent a Rochester teenager to the hospital today. Rochester police say the 15 year old male was shot once in the lower body. Investigators are trying to determine if a foot pursuit immediately after was related to the incident. RPD says at this time the location of the incident is unknown. It is asking anyone with information to call 911. The teenager is expected to survive. The cause of a fire on Laser Street is being investigated. Rochester Fire responded to multiple reports of a house on fire around 3.30 this morning. Additional crews were needed to help battle what RFD says was a heavy fire. After crews conducted a search, the home was found to be unoccupied. The death toll after massive flooding in Kentucky is now at 26. Kentucky's governor says 37 people are still unaccounted for. He says the true toll won't be known for weeks. Officials say the damage to roads, bridges and homes has been devastating and search crews still can't get into some of the hardest hit areas. That's as more storms are in the forecast today into tomorrow. Crews will continue to be out searching in the rain, but it's going to add more complexity and danger to an already difficult rescue effort. We've probably got somewhere around 50 plus uh, bridges that are washed out, broke, head walls gone, uh, that we will have to try to figure out a way to fix. When we think about the challenges, it's not just this. It's also the excessive heat that's coming up when you don't have working water systems and you don't have power to everyone. A dozen shelters have opened for hundreds of displaced flood victims. Major wildfires in the western U.S. exploded in size overnight. More than 100 homes have been evacuated in California's National Forest. The McKinney Fire is now more than 80 square miles after just two days. Our biggest challenges is we all know the Klamath National Forest is a big and beautiful forest, but it also has some steep and rugged terrain. And with that, coupled with the high temperatures, low humidity, uh, they all come into play and make it a very extreme fire danger situation. California's governor has declared a state of emergency. More than 100 residents in nearby towns have been told to leave. Still ahead tonight, how Monroe County is hoping to save lives in the opioid battle. And we continue our breaking news coverage of fallen Ro Rochester police officer Anthony Mazurkowitz. Um, <clears throat> we lost a good man, a good cop, a good father, a good husband, and most importantly, just a great public servant. I miss him, and I hope wherever you're going, you're looking down, because we do care a lot about you. The 13 Wham Mobile Weather Tracker. In less than 24 hours, Rochester Police Officer Anthony Mazurkowitz will be laid to rest. We continue our breaking news coverage tonight, remembering the officer killed in the line of duty. Mazurkowitz and his partner, Officer Sino Sang, were shot during an ambush while investigating a homicide last week on Bauman Street, killing Mazurkowitz and injuring Sang. Rochester police accused 21-year-old Kelvin Vickers of using a semi-automatic pistol to shoot 16 rounds at the officers while they sat in a parked vehicle. Vickers, who is from Massachusetts, is facing multiple charges, including murder and attempted murder. Of the 16 rounds, two shot Mazurkowitz. Officer Mazurkowitz, a husband, father, and grandfather, served with the department for 29 years. Tomorrow, he will be 